guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about a really popular trend of using monostat for hair growth. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you, does it work? How might it work? And why the hype? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot. I've taken notice of this trend for some time now of people, particularly in the natural hair community, using monostat for hair growth, claiming that it helps with hair growth. What is monostat? It is a cream used to treat vaginal yeast infections. It's a brand name, but the active ingredient in monostat is an antifungal ingredient called meconazole. Why might meconazole work for hair growth? I'm gonna get into that in today's video. When it comes to healthy hair, the health of your scalp is key. One of the most effective things that you can do to maintain the health of your scalp is to shampoo the scalp as frequently as your hair type tolerates. For me, that is daily, but for other people, it's gonna be a few times a week. Just depends on your hair type. Why is this so important? One thing you may not realize is that there's a lot of surface area on your scalp that needs to turn over and exfoliate and shed. The act of shampooing and cleansing helps remove those shedding skin cells. Even for people with a totally healthy scalp, if they stop shampooing, after about one to two weeks, they will start to have noticeable flakes of skin cells that are trying to be shed. So it's really important. Finding a good shampoo can be a challenge. You guys know I have been a long time fan of Function of Beauty hair care products. And I'm really excited to be partnering with them again on today's video. I've been using Function of Beauty for well over a year and it's been a game changer, not only in the health of my scalp, but in the shine and manageability of my hair. What is Function of Beauty? It is fully customizable hair care to meet your unique needs. Everyone's hair type, texture, and overall oiliness is incredibly different. Finding a shampoo that meets your needs can be a challenge. It's really simple. You just go in, you take a quick quiz outlining what your hair type is, your specific hair goals. You can choose up to five. For me, I really value shine in my hair care products. I always point out in my videos that fragrance and dyes and, and skincare and hair care products can cause irritation for people. And in your journey to improving your hair growth, the last thing you, that you want is to be putting irritating hair care products on your scalp. What I love most about Function of Beauty is that you can choose to have color or not, and you can choose to have fragrance or not. So I choose my products free of fragrance and dye. I went into my bathroom and pulled out the ones that I have currently in use from Function of Beauty. This is the conditioner and the shampoo. I'm almost out, but no worries. I have one ready to go as soon as those are empty. So I brought I brought the newer bottles out here for you guys to see, but one of the things that is so fun about Function of Beauty is that you can have your name put on the bottle. So it says Function of Dre. I just think that that, just that little extra touch, it, I don't know, it's just like a little bright spot in my evening shower routine. You can also throw in add-ons. And for me, I adore their hair mask. Again, you can get this free of fragrance and uh, dyes which can be really challenging to find in a moisturizing hair mask. If you click the link in my description box, you can get 20% off your first function of beauty order. And again, scalp health and scalp cleansing is key to healthy hair growth. Finding the right shampoo and conditioner doesn't have to be that difficult. Try out function of beauty, it makes it really simple. All right, now that you understand how important the health of your scalp is for good hair growth, why am I putting a yeast infection cream for the JJ? on your scalp help with hair growth? Does it work? Truthfully, hate to break it to you, there are zero, zero clinical studies of using myconazole cream, AKA monostat for hair growth. If there are no clinical studies showing that it works, why are people so enthusiastic about doing it and claiming that you know they see great results? It's actually not completely unreasonable to consider monostat for a healthy scalp. Monostat is an azole antifungal, similar to another ingredient, ketoconazole. And we have actual data showing that ketoconazole and shampoos can actually help in reducing the burden of this yeast that lives on the skin and can drive a lot of inflammation into the scalp. Anything that causes inflammation in your scalp can aggravate certain types of hair loss. 
For example, in people who cope with dandruff, one of the, the one issue with dandruff is that the skin cells proliferate too quickly and not like appropriately. They end up kind of getting mounded up and as a result, you have these large aggregates of skin cells stuck together, and that's what leads to those big flakes. Those big flakes trap oil, and they trap some of the little um, malassezia that can break down some of the oils and generate inflammatory mediators. That's why dandruff starts to get red, itchy, uncomfortable, and all that inflammation in the scalp definitely can contribute to hair loss, either through breakage or through actually potentially impacting the hair cycle. Um, as I said, we have some studies suggesting that using an antifungal, namely ketoconazole, might help in certain types of hair loss. Key word there, certain. Not all types of hair loss have anything to do with the inflammation from that little yeast. Um, for example, there is uh, traction hair loss, hair loss due to basically pulling, you know, really tight hairstyles that put a lot of stress on your scalp. Has nothing to do with, that has nothing to do with that little yeast. It has to do with the, tra the, the traction on the scalp and those tension forces. So in that case, you're going to want to change your hairstyle to a more loose fitting style. You want to stop wearing tight braids, tight ponytails, you want to avoid using uh, styling products that maybe have a lot of alcohol in them, namely those products that are kind of marketed as being long wearing or long, long lasting hold, uh, because that dries out the little uh, baby hairs and leads to breakage and kind of weakens them even further. Avoiding headbands is another thing to, to keep, keep the, the traction hair loss at bay. And then of course, avoiding a lot of heat styling that can further weaken the strands. Nothing to do with that little yeast. Um, another type of hair loss that's quite common is something called uh, alopecia areata. Alopecia areata is an autoimmune attack on the uh, hair cells and leads to sudden patches of baldness. And that, uh, in most cases, will calm down and the hair will regrow, although in other cases it doesn't. And in those cases, you want to see your uh, dermatologists, there are prescription treatments for that, but it doesn't have anything to do with that little yeast. And then another type of hair loss that a lot of people right now are especially are dealing with is telogen effluvium. It's basically increased shedding. This happens about three months after you've had a stressful event, aka 2020. Uh, and so we're seeing a lot of telogen effluvium. Uh, malassezia has nothing to do, malassezia is the yeast, Malassezia has nothing to do with telogen effluvium or shedding. You can develop shedding not only after, you know, 2020 and the stress, but it can happen. It happens after pregnancy. It happens when you start and stop certain medications, namely birth control pills, for example, or is a classic one that, well, three months after the fact, you might notice that your hair, you're shedding a lot of hair. Um, and so that can be very distressing to people, but truthfully, it's not a permanent type of hair loss. It's just a shift in the hair cycle. Unlike humans, animals, they shed their winter coat. Their hair cycle is kind of timed differently. Our hair cycle is all over the place, so we don't really experience mass shedding as part of our hair. But if we do undergo a stressful life event, the hair cycle will shift and put more hairs into a certain resting phase, and then you'll subsequently have a, more of a mass shedding. But it has nothing to do with that little yeast on the skin, on the scalp. So the antifungal cream is not gonna do anything for it. Those are just some common other forms of hair loss. The type of hair loss where you could potentially make an argument for the uh, myconazole, aka um, monostat cream, is gonna be pattern hair loss, uh, androgenetic alopecia. This is thinning related to age and hormones and genetics. So how do you know if using monostat is actually gonna work for you? The best thing to do, unfortunately, I know it's challenging, but that is to see a board certified dermatologist who can diagnose the type of hair loss that you have. This is, there are so many different types of hair loss that if you just go treating one with, with Monistat, you could be missing out on potentially hair saving treatments that are better and more suited for the type of hair loss that you are experiencing. 
Um, so that is actually your best bet. But I realize that it's challenging to get in to see a dermatologist. Not everybody, you know, is able to. Uh, but that really is the best thing. Otherwise, you're just kind of, kind of, you know, <laughs> lost in the dark. Unfortunately, is it harmful to use a monostat? I don't think so. I mean, I, I can't really see it being uh, that problematic unless you find that the ingredients in monostat are irritating to your scalp, in which case definitely don't do it. So it's not harmful. It seems low risk, low reward. <laughs> Uh, but you know, you can develop irritation to anything. And so that is a possibility, but an alternative to using the monostat is to simply cleanse your scalp more frequently. Uh, that helps with shedding of the skin cells, reduces the burden of inflammation. However, let's think about who is motivated mostly. I mean, if you look online to be doing the monostat thing, it's people in the natural hair community who have textured hair that doesn't tolerate frequent shampooing. So I can definitely see why people are motivated to try this. So I don't think it's unreasonable to try, especially if you are, you have a hair type that just doesn't tolerate frequent shampooing and you're getting a lot of flakes, buildup, irritation in the scalp, it might be something to consider trying. It seems very low risk to me. That being said, if you do develop any type of irritation to monostat, I would say stop because that's going to take you several steps back. Uh, so it seems pretty unlikely to cause harm in my opinion. If you look at the ingredients in monostat beyond the active ingredient, myconazole, it actually has a pretty short ingredient list. There's no fragrance or dyes. Uh, I mean, it's intended to go in the vagina. So it shouldn't likely cause problems when applied to the scalp, but again, anything can cause issue. It does have propylene glycol. Uh, propylene glycol is not you know, a bad ingredient, but for some people it is irritating. It's the ingredient in Rogaine, in over-the-counter hair loss treatment, that causes the most irritation for people actually, is the propylene glycol. So that could potentially be an ingredient in the monostat that might give you issue but that might not be the case for you at all. So to be clear, monostat might help with hair loss ultimately, but it's only gonna help with a certain type and it's not actually growing your hair. It's reducing the inflammation that drives hair loss. I mean, that's a nitpicky detail, but I want, it's important because some people out there might just think, you know, with perfectly healthy, with a perfectly healthy scalp and no scalp disease, they might just want to grow thicker hair and try it out. It's not, it's not gonna work that way. If you have a healthy scalp and you're not dealing with any form of hair loss, this isn't something that's just gonna boom, grow your hair. That's what I can tell you guys about Monostat for hair growth. It doesn't actually grow hair, but it might reduce the inflammation that contributes to certain types of hair loss, namely androgenetic alopecia or pattern hair loss as it's more commonly referred to. And I, overall, I think it's pretty low, low risk, but likely low reward. It's all gonna be dependent on the type of hair loss, of course. Still, the best practice is to shampoo your scalp as frequently as your hair type will tolerate. This helps with exfoliating those exfoliating skin cells, and it also helps remove excess oiliness. It's a combination of the oily buildup plus the buildup of the shedding skin cells that is like, ultimate haven for malassezia. They break down the oils in those humped up skin cells and that drives inflammation in the scalp that can affect the hair cycle down the road and contribute further to pattern hair loss. So it's the, it's the shampooing that's still key. As frequently as your hair type tolerates. For me, that's every day. Um, and so if I don't shampoo every day, I don't actually have dandruff, but if I, I tried the no shampooing thing once upon a dream a long time ago, and after a few weeks, I did have noticeable flakes. If you're in the market for a good shampoo, you're looking for one that will meet your specific hair type and hair needs, definitely check out Function of Beauty. Click the link in my description box. You can get 20% off your first order. Thank you, Function of Beauty, so much for sponsoring today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.